Please join me in welcoming this distinguished scientist, Dr. Pat Michaels. Um, I'm going to switch to the lavalier, and if it, if it feeds back, uh, we're going to have trouble. Yeah, we'll know. Are we okay? We're fine. I have to borrow a title from Al Gore. Uh, and I have to uh, talk about the inconvenient truths about global warming uh, that did not appear in his movie. But first of all, I want to tell you about this issue and how to lose any argument. Please don't go around, and you can hear this on talk radio all the time, saying that there is no such thing as global warming. This is the peaceful little village of Argentier in Switzerland. And what you see down here is a glacier. This is the Argentier Glacier here, side of the mountain. This was 1966. It's from the first book that was written on the subject that said climate changes on orders of space and time that could actually be important to human society. It was a book called Times of Feast, Times of Famine, Climate Since the Year 1000 by Emmanuel Lodgery. And I know that all you people go and walk in the woods or whatever you do, and you can look at the side of a mountain, and you look at the side of this mountain, and you say, aha, that's a lateral moraine that was laid down during the height of the Ice Age about 11,800 years ago. Well, in fact, that's not the case. It was laid down 116 years before. This is during the Little Ice Age, the end of the Little Ice Age. I have a question for you. This is the peaceful little village of Argentier. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. And the people are praying for what? This glacier is coming down the side of the mountain. It's about to devour the village of Argentier. God helps those that help themselves. Right around then, oil was discovered in a place called Oil City, Pennsylvania. Daimler developed the internal combustion engine. We began to burn fossil fuel. Carbon dioxide went into the atmosphere, and the glacier went up the side of the mountain. In fact, these are the emissions of carbon dioxide back to 1957. You can see they're going up and up and up and up. Can you ever remember a guy by the name of Paul Ehrlich wrote something called the population bomb? They had all these, these, these scenarios where things just get worse and worse and worse. Well, it was assumed when global warming became a scientific issue, which is in 1980, right about here, the CO2 concentration would increase along this big exponential line and be on the second story of this building. It did not happen. Every scientist that I know was convinced that that was going to happen in 1980. Not one of them were right. There were economists that argued that this could not take place because of price and markets, market realities, and it turns out that they were true. But we have an issue that is controlled now by a climate of hysteria. Nothing more, I think, uh, a, a, not a better example of this than Gore's movie, An Inconvenient Truth. I'm going to use things in his movie and the disaster scenarios that come forth to show you how to argue this issue and what is wrong with what you're seeing on television and reading in the media. Here's the way they argue. This is from Gore's book and the movie. I have learned that beyond death and taxes, there is at least one absolute indisputable fact. Not only does human cause global warming exist, stop right there. That's true. Next clause. But it is growing more and more dangerous. That does not follow from the first at all. Just because you might have warmed the temperature of the planet a little bit, does not at all imply something very bad. Here, by the way, is the history of surface temperature of this planet, in case you're wondering, done by the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, of which I am a member, proving that all garden parties need a skunk. But you know, you got to remember some. The, skunk, the, skunks, the skunks fly in the front of the plane. It has to do with supply and demand. Anyway, when you look at this history, look at this history, you're going to see two distinct warmings in the 20th century. The first one occurred here from 1910 to about 1945, and it's the same size as the one that began in 1975. This one had nothing to do with people burning fossil fuel, because they hadn't put enough in the atmosphere by then. This is caused by fossil fuel. Again, the temperature would be up here on the second floor of the building. The one in 19, beginning in 1975 does. How do we know that? Because it takes place primarily in the winter, primarily at night, and primarily in high-latitude land areas, particularly in the northern hemisphere. The 
theory of greenhouse warming predicts that. It also predicts that the stratospheric temperature from 50,000 feet on up would drop. And it has been dropping. Having said that, having said human beings are doing a considerable portion of this, now does that lead to the scenario of disaster? Well, let me tell you a little bit about $6 billion of research that you have funded. You have funded $6 billion for people to produce things that are called climate models. I'll talk about those, but I hope not to bore you. And what they say is that once warming starts in the atmosphere, it takes place at a constant rate, not an ever-increasing rate. How many news stories have you read, the planet is warming at an ever-increasing rate? Every one of those stories is wrong. This is the UN's temperature history. The planet is warming at a constant rate. An ever-increasing rate is an exponent. The computer models say once it starts to warm at that rate, it will continue to warm at that rate. That rate is very, very small. It's about 8 tenths of a degree Celsius per half year, per half century, 1.6 degrees per century. We had 8 tenths of a degree in the last century. You know what happened? You lived. <laughs> Not only did you live, but your life expectancy is double what it was here in 1900 in the industrialized world. That's the equivalent, because of so many people that have lived since then, that's the equivalent of saving two billion lives. That's what happened as a spin-off of the technology that created a slight warming of the planet. The yield of corn is five times what it was in the early 20th century. Five times. We feed a planet. Paul Ehrlich said we'd all be starving by now. The doomsdayers in 1970 said you couldn't breathe the air. None of this was right. All of it was in the media. All of it was accepted. It drove the Clean Air Act. Nixon became an environmentalist. This hysteria is driving the legislation in Washington right now. And it will pass. It will be vetoed with this president. I hate to say what the alternative is. Time to get to work, folks. <laughs> anyway, now, having said that, I'm going to present the common myths about global warming. Antarctica is melting. The sea levels are going to rise an incredible amount. This is actually a, from Gore's book. He says the second canary in the coal mine is Antarctica. The first canary, by the way, is Greenland. We've got to get to Greenland in a second. That's a really cool story. <laughs> but uh, Al actually put some perspective in his book. For Al, this is really a remarkable show. Uh, he, he talked, this is a quote from his book, and right as the Antarctic Peninsula, each orange splotch represents an ice shelf the size of Rhode Island or larger that has broken up since 1978. Thanks, Al. And thanks for showing us the inset to show how much of Antarctica this is. <laughs> because it happens to be 1% of Antarctica. And we do know the temperature history from Antarctica. I just saw another paper published on this yesterday showing the exact same thing. This is the Antarctic temperature history. This is published by Peter Duran in the journal Nature in 2003. Uh, and yes, this is the color scheme here. And yes, those colors are cold. That's right. Antarctica's temperature is going down, averaged across Antarctica. However, over here, where Gore was, remember this spot right here? See this spot? Where it was? That's the place that's warming up. And that's where all the television shows come from. The British Antarctic Survey has a station here. They will talk about the warming of Antarctica, knowing full well that they are representing less than 1% of Antarctica and the whole place is cooling now, but that would wreck a really fine story, wouldn't it? Here are two, uh, th this, is, this is the scientific basis for Antarctica is melting. It was published in Science Magazine in, in uh, March of 06, and it shows the blue is the West Antarctic ice sheet, the red is the East Antarctic ice sheet, there are two of these, and you can see it going down. Yeah, right, okay? If, if, if this were somebody's master's thesis that I was supervising, it would not pass. You don't base something upon two extreme points of data that are at the beginning of the record and separated from the rest of the record. And also, I wouldn't say very much about Antarctica. It begins in year 2002.5 and ends in year 2005.5. That's like saying the temperature that changed between 3 and 5 o'clock today is representative of the last 24 hours. I don't think so. In fact, we do have some pretty good records for Antarctica.